1538 AD, year eight of the reign of King Tabin Shweti. Over two decades ago, an old village shaman came to our little mountain kingdom of Tungu. He claimed to speak with the Nats, the ancestral spirits worshipped by our people before the coming of Buddhism. The Nats had told the shaman that an ancient warrior prince would be reincarnated in our kingdom. This prince would rule as the Shakavati, the universal ruler embodying Buddhist virtue. Soon after, the king had a son named Tabin Shweti. At the same time, a servant girl also had a son, and she was made the newborn prince's wet nurse. I know this story well, as I am the son of that servant girl and was raised alongside my future king. Thus the Nats joined the fates of a king and a servant. My mother is not so sure Tabin Shweti is who the Nats spoke of. She says the Nats are tricky spirits who mislead with their blessings. But I tell my mother I am no prince. Only King Tabin Shweti can lead our small kingdom against our enemies. And our enemies are many. Our lands are under attack by the Shan, a warrior people from the far north. Our walls cannot stop them, so we attack south to gain a stronger foothold in Hantawadi. The Nats bring fear into the heart of the Hantawadi king. He flees to his allies, just as a frightened buffalo runs to his herd after smelling a tiger. The king and I are the Burmese tigers chasing after that buffalo. To reward my service in battle, my king bestowed a name of great honor upon me, Banyang, which means king's elder brother. Though he is a king, and I am but the son of a servant girl, he embraced me and declared a shared blood. I am no longer a simple servant. I am Bain Yang. I am a prince. 1543 AD, year 13 of the reign of King Tabin Shweti. Our conquest of Lower Burma has brought fear to the Shan warlords. They call upon their allies, the kingdom of Ava and the mighty Rakhin people to raise armies against us. My king and I march north to Upper Burma, following the pilgrimage trail to Bagan, city of 10,000 temples. From this city, the ancient kings of Pagan once ruled over a united Burmese people. If my king is to rule all of Burma, he must be crowned in Pagan. I will march ahead of my king to secure the ancient city and prepare for the coronation. With my help and the blessings of the Nats, my brother will fulfill his prophesied destiny. Our kingdom is mighty under King Taban Shweti. The greatest monks, warriors, and administrators in all of Burma come to our court. The king has made me his chief minister, but I worry for my brother. A man from distant Portugal has stumbled into the court and intrigued the king with his foreign ways and bottles of strong wine. I fear that the blessed path that we have walked together will come to a cursed end. 1550 AD. Year 20 of the reign of King Tabin Shweti. I am the chief minister of a kingdom without a king. The man from Portugal has corrupted King Tabin Shweti. My lord has taken to drinking and forgotten both the ways of Buddhism and the blessings of the Nats. He leaves with the foreigner for weeks at a time on long wine-filled hunting trips. 
Even when he is in court, the king orders executions in drunken fits. Many of the kingdom's officials have pleaded with me to depose the king and rule Burma justly. But though I love my country, I cannot betray my brother. I should have known rebellion would come. A monk named Ta, brother of the dead Hantawadi king, incites a revolt in the south. The king is leaving on yet another hunting trip, but he has ordered me to take the army to defeat this rebel. I will follow my king's instructions, but I am concerned. A minister named Sartat is eager to see me leave. I do not know what trouble he has brewing. Sartat paid two swordsmen of the king's bodyguard to enter my brother's tent as he slept. Their pockets, heavy with the traitor's gold, they drew their swords and headed my brother. His body was found by a monk and quietly cremated. I would throw away this crown if it brought my brother back, but he is among the gnats now. The gnats were tricky, just as my mother told me. They took my brother from me. I should not be king. I should not be the Chakavati. But the gnats made it so. I reject them. 1563 A.D. Year 13 of the reign of Bainyam, king of Burma. The tiger rules the forest, but he is always hungry. It is the same with me as I look to the Thai kingdoms of the east. I have ruled for 13 years, but how am I the Chakavati if I am only king of Burma? Ayut Taya is the strongest of the Thai kingdoms. Her king, Chakrafat, has defied me for too long. He encourages the rebellion of one of my vassals, the king of Lan Na. Even now, he sends his daughter to marry the ruler of the kingdom of Lan Shan in exchange for an alliance against me. But these schemes alone do not drive me to war. I know that Chakrafat has seven white elephants, a symbol of luck and divine favor. Already I hear the murmurs in the court. People with more spirit than sense whisper that if I truly am the Chakravati, why would the gnats have blessed Chakrafat with the elephants? I cannot allow this Thai king, nor the gnats themselves, to defy me. I will send my armies east, but they will not just bring war. I will send Buddhist monks with them to carry the word of my blessed Buddhist rule. I have conquered my enemies and made them bow before me. I have purged the land of the gnats, building stupas and monasteries where once the spirits ruled. I I am the conqueror of the Ten Directions. I am master of all between the foothills of Tibet and the waters of Malacca, between the plains of India and the mountain jungle of Vietnam. The kings of Sri Lanka and Portugal send me gifts from across the ocean. The emperors of India and China call me their equal. My life will be in the legends of three nations for centuries. I am Banyang. I am the Chakavati. 1580 AD, year 30 of the reign of the Chakavati. Though the tiger grows old, his hunger does not leave him. It grows with age, driving him to fresh hunting grounds and giving him a taste for more dangerous prey. For 30 years, I have ruled Burma and made a dozen kings bow before me. But what will they say of my life? That I ruled by the sword 
and killed many men? That I, a king, was a slave to my desire? The old tiger is stubborn, but he knows when his hunger has gotten the best of him. My sons lead the army to conquer the Rakim coast, the gateway to India. They are like their father once, chasing in vain across the earth for their greatest victory. My father did not live to see the conquest of the Rakim. The doctor claimed the lung sickness took his life. But I know my father. No man who rode a charging elephant into throngs of Shan archers, who stormed the cities of the time, or who ruled an empire not seen since the ancient days would die from a mere cough. <coughs> no. My father left this world because he chose to. There was only one conquest left, worthy of a man like Bai Nyong. I know legends will be told of him. I know old shamans will tell prophecies. But no deed would match his final act. Greater in battle than the man who would conquer a thousand men is he who would conquer just one. Himself. 